guys. What's going on? What's going on? Entertain the geeky. What's up? Hello. So, man, we, we, we came into today with the expectation of, hey, we might talk about some Final Fantasy with another, uh, with another Final Fantasy master. <laughs> yeah. And, and here, here we are with, well, you're stuck with me. And I am, and me. I am no master of Final Fantasy. Well, I was talking to you there, not them. No, I'm not a master of Final Fantasy. He is a master of fantasy. Uh, no. <laughs> I, got, I got a few trophies left to get, but getting a platinum trophy does not make you a master. It just means you've, you've, you know, taking the time to frustrate yourself over and over again until you were finally done. I think, I think because that's, to be honest, that is happening. It I, is frustrating. I think that's any game like to some extent though. Yeah. Not all trophies are most, most trophy lists nowadays are not tied into difficulty though. The final fantasy games have always had trophies that are tied into difficulty. Defeat the game on hard mode. That makes sense. And complete all of these ridiculous legendary and brutal challenges. Like it's frustrating as hell. And I've watched some people do it, and uh, people on the internet make it look easy. I don't understand. They're the masters. I don't understand how they do that. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. They're super brilliant, probably. I mean, I watched a guy literally do the, the Sephiroth challenge where you fight 10 rounds, uh, first round, two summons, second round, legendary creature, third round, two more summons fourth round legendary creature so on and so forth uh until you get all the way to gilgamesh which is the final uh boss in the in that arena 10 rounds and this guy just i think mean, he's just made it look easy i mean it was literally a 40 minute video because it's not a quick thing to do but he was fine he the had whole time. swamp ass like don't let the fact that he wasn't sweating visibly well i understand I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying like i don't understand these people i don't understand these people who it can make these decisions so quickly, like can cycle through the menu so quickly. Like I understand the menu always looks the same, but I still have to look at it. I don't just automatically know where everything is, you know? See, and when I see people do that, I feel like an idiot. Like they're cycling through the menu without even looking at it. Yeah. And, and I guess just hoping that their choices were right. What if you, what if you were going through it so fast, you clicked on the wrong thing and you ended up healing the thing you were fighting. Cause there are elemental attacks against certain enemies that actually will just heal them. So he was a super genius, okay? <laughs> because they absorb the element. He was a super genius. He could see it, think it, and interpret it faster than you could. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not a knock to you, man. It's just he's well, no, I understand a better that. human I, being That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I don't understand how people have that capacity. I don't know. And that's just one. That's just one brutal challenge. Every There are... You know, I finished all of the normal Chadley combat simulator challenges through my normal playthroughs. Uh, and then once you complete the entirety of the quest line with Chadley, the proto relic quest line, you open up two, two brand new lists of challenges, legendary and brutal, which are the hardest challenges in the game. Because I'll be honest, the, the, the game forces you in the final proto relic quest to fight two summons at once in key locations around the map. So one of those fights is Odin and Alexander, two of the toughest summons in the game to fight just in general. Um, but Odin, especially, if, if you don't block his attacks perfectly to where you take no damage, if he damages you in any capacity quick enough, he always uses the Zantazukin. And the Zantazukin is just instant death. There is no coming back from it. You can put on your little, you know, accessories that prevent instant death, but they leave you with one hit point after an attack like that. And almost immediately that is followed up by Alexander doing an attack. So it doesn't matter. You're not going to be able to react quickly enough to keep your characters alive to get back into the fight. So just be perfect in the first place. You just have to be perfect. And, and, and I had to, again, so I had to do that fight. I mean, I was doing it on normal, right? But it was still frustrating as hell. So I can't even imagine trying to do it on hard mode. Because, again, you have to be perfect. You can't let him damage you. And at the same time, you can't let him damage you. You also have an entire other summon you have to focus on. So, now, truth be told, I got through that fight, right? It was hard, and I had to do it a few times to get through it. But I did eventually get through it. Because there is a moment, if you focus on Odin... 
and ignore Alexander, ignore is the wrong word, because you still have to pay attention to Alexander because right. you still have attacks he's throwing at you that you have to get out of the way of or you're going to massively take damage. Uh, so if you focus on Odin, once you've cleared half of his health bar, he disappears from the fight for about 10 minutes. And then you can focus entirely on Alexander. But you better kill Alexander before Odin comes back or you're screwed. How long do these fights typically take? The summon fights take at least 15 to 20 minutes apiece. Jesus. I mean, at least. And that's, and that's even, even, I'm even talking about the, the guy I watched on the internet who did it like perfectly. It still took him 40 minutes to get through that entire gauntlet. That's crazy. Right? This is not something, like it's like fighting the, the giant Adamantois in Final Fantasy 15. This is a fight that's going to take you an hour. That's because that's just wild, how many man. hit points it has. That is nutty. Yeah. That is so nutty to me. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to get through these fights quickly. Regular random fights you get into in the open world, yeah, you get through those in a minute. You yeah, know. you can go in and torch somebody. Yeah, quick, yeah. But, yeah. but boss fights and these like legendary challenges, no, nah, this is not a quick thing. You're going to be sitting here for hours. That's fucking brutal, dude. Going through. Because, again, most of the legendary challenges or the brutal challenges, I don't remember which one, most of them are 10 round events, right? So that's 10 fights that you have to do consecutively. And if you fail, you start over from number one. Nah, man. You don't get to reload from the fight you failed. You have to start from the beginning. So you're a completionist. I'm not. I would beat the game on normal mode, and I'd be like, wow, that was fun. Let's never do this again. Yeah, so the, the, the another thing that Final Fantasy VII does particularly that is frustrating is, so going through the game, you get these things called folios, and they allow you to upgrade your abilities, right? So you get your upgrade your limits through this menu you upgrade your synergy abilities which are abilities you do with your partner or you know with your other characters on the on the field uh so upgrading upgrading all of that stuff on normal mode is not possible mm. you have to play on hard mode because there are certain folios that are tied to fights on hard mode jesus so if you want it's not even about being completion if you just want to finish out your skill tree you have to play the game on hard oh mode. my god dude <laughs> that's what i'm saying so they, this game was made for masochists, like somebody that wants to. <laughs> well, you know, that's funny because I've always said that about Dark Souls games. You have said that. And I don't play Dark Souls games because of that. But, you, but you'll do it with Final Fantasy. You're just well, so in love with the story. You're like, I deserve this. Yeah, but see, the difference with this, <laughs> the difference with Final Fantasy is, like you said, you can just play through it on easy or normal mode. Right. If you're not, if you don't care that that's, got, that's only going to get you half the stuff you need to finish out all your skill tree. Well, yeah, then you're fine. What happens with the skill tree after that, I guess? Like, is it... It's done. Do you get to go fight guys on the internet? Like, or is no, it like... No. See, because then I'd be like, yeah, no, I, f I get that. I get that. No, no, no. It's it's literally just for the trophy or the bragging rights. I did it. I ah, beat all the brutal and legendary challenges. I'm not a bragging rights kind of girl. Yeah, I mean, I... The only reason I am is because of Capuano. I mean, literally, you the guys, only reason... You guys are disgusting with this. The only reason I would actually subject myself, because I normally would not care. <laughs> the only reason I would subject myself to this is because Capuano did it. And I'm like, well, if he can fucking do it, I can fucking do he's, it. He's no better than I am. Well, also, it's a competition, right? It's, <laughs> I know. It's, he's the only other player on my PlayStation friends list that plays as many video games as I do that has a high trophy count or a high level, you know, according to PlayStation. So... Really, it's just keeping ahead of him. That's what this is really about. At this point. Yeah, I don't really care <laughs> to finish the game on hard mode. I don't even like this fucking game. But if he did it, I'm going to do it because I can't have him have a trophy that I don't have. Oh, my gosh. I, I will look through his that. list. I will look through his list and go, <laughs> oh, we both played this game and he platinumed it. Well, I got to platinum it now. I want platinum plus. <laughs> I want something extra. It's a competition thing, right? And it's not like it's 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 not like when we're discussing it, we're talking about it in that way. We both enjoy the game. We both enjoy video games as a hobby. Uh, <laughs> so it's not like we're 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 openly like mocking and or competing with each other. But when I see that he's ahead, it bothers me. And I don't know if he feels the same way. But I know it bothers me when I see that he he's does. Ahead. I, I promise he does. <laughs> Because he is ahead now. He's almost done with his hard mode. 
uh, playthrough, and I have not started mine yet. I'm going through the game right now, maxing out all the materia I am going to need for the hard mode playthrough. Um, but I, I keep seeing these things on the internet, and I, I went and did a couple of hard mode challenges because there's some gear you can you get. You have a, a item crafting thing in this game where yeah. you can craft armor, you can craft accessories and, and materia and different things like that. So there is an item crafting thing that is tied to some fights on hard mode where you have to beat a certain enemy on hard mode in order to get uh, like a, a piece of them okay. to build this equipment. So I went and I put the game on hard mode in chapter 12 where you have like the whole map open to you and you can just fast travel anywhere so that I could get these things to make these items. Of course. And so I keep seeing people on the internet talking about hard mode and here's some tips and blah, blah, blah. And I keep seeing people say, well, you know, just like in the first game, you can't refill your magic points at benches. Well, that's not true. That's just not true for this game. When you sit down at a bench in the open world, one that requires you to use a cushion, right? Because they're like old and broken. That was my bad. Oh, okay. No, no, no. So like, I, I was like, I don't have a device that makes that noise. There's like old and broken, <laughs> so you need a little cushion, things you can buy or craft. But those, those refill your HP and MP. The regular benches, they're right. They don't. But these random ones out in the open world, they absolutely do. I was being a piece of shit. So I don't know what people are talking about. I, I've seen many people giving tips like, oh, you just have to manage your magic because you can't refill it. I'm like, but you can. I did it. And I'm not special. I was just on hard mode. There's only one hard mode. You know what I mean? It's not like right. just hard mode and then very hard mode. No, it's just hard mode. So yeah, I've seen these people talking about it. I don't understand it because it's not true. It's just not true. So you heard it from me. You don't have to worry about managing your magic points on hard mode. You can refill them at benches. Now, when you are in a dungeon environment, there are no benches other than the normal ones that only refill your HP. But if you're doing open world activities, which you have to do in hard mode because there are certain folios that are tied to some of those side activities, mm -hmm. you can just sit down on one of the cushion benches and, and everything's fine. It refills everything. So you were just talking about when you're in a dungeon, and it made me think of something. What's that? Um, there is a show on Netflix now, and it's uh, like Cooking in the Dungeon or something like that. It is a <sighs> D&D anime. Okay. And basically there's levels to the dungeon, and as the individuals who, uh, the, the protagonists in the story are going into the dungeon, they're like, well, we're going to stay down here for a long time, so we're going to have to learn how to eat the stuff from the dungeon. <laughs> Okay. So they, they they start eating their kills and a couple of them are pretty they're pretty prissy characters so they're like I'm not eating that. Sure. No, that's a bug. And they meet this like little dwarf guy that's like no, you just cook the shit out of it like this and it's real tasty. Jeez. And it, it it made me think uh of when I play I don't monitor my people's rations right in D&D. I'm always like, yeah, sure fucking eat. You're fine. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I always, always assume that when, you know, oh, sorry. That's okay. The way I've always ran it is, you know, if you're if you're settling down to make camp, it is assumed that you ate some food. I don't need to, I don't need to track that. I don't need you to worry about that. Like, if you're if you're sitting down to make a camp or if you're going to a, an inn for the night, yeah, you ate some food, right? And if you're, of you're adventuring along the way, maybe you're eating some trail mix or some jerky or something. You know what I mean? I've never really made a point to pay attention to that. The same way I don't really pay attention to encumbrance, right? Sure. Unless you're being ridiculous about it and you want to take 50 pounds of gold and carry it around with you. Nah, it just doesn't matter. Right? I'm going to load up this satchel right here. here yeah, we yeah, go. we're going to steal this entire dragon's horde. Well, no, you can't. That's thousands of pounds of gold. You can't take that. <laughs> It'll take you some time. You're going to make multiple trips. You're gonna have, yeah, yeah, you're going to sit here for 50 trips collecting all this gold? Hopefully nobody else notices what you're doing and right. comes in and starts stealing it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I've no, there's certain little things like that that I'm just like, look, I, I appreciate that the people who designed the game put that rule in there, but those rules more apply, I think, to the video game world. They don't need to apply to the tabletop role-playing Sure, world, sure. Right? When I'm playing Elder Scrolls and I pick up a thing and all of a sudden my guy has to move really slowly because he's encumbered. Okay, yeah, that makes sense to me, right? Because I'm greedy and I picked up too many things. I picked up, yeah, okay, that's fair, that's fair. Right? But I don't, I've never had to thought that you need to pay attention. Like I said, unless somebody's being ridiculous. I did have a player in a D&D, in a Pathfinder game one time who... 
was playing a pirate who carried daggers on him. Now, when I say daggers, I'm not talking about like throwing knives, which would be the ideal thing you would have because you could carry a lot of them. They don't weigh anything. No, this guy wanted like full on daggers and he wanted like 60 of them on him at all times. Yeah, we've talked about him before. Jimmy, Jimmy Blades. Yeah. Jimmy Blades is the guy. Uh, and so in that regard, it was like, well, no, dude. You realize you, you'd have to be carrying around like 100 pounds on you all the time if that's what you wanted to do, right? Yeah, my God. It's legs day for my there guy. There are throwing daggers that weigh nothing. They're little tiny things that you pull out real quick and yeah, yeah, you throw them. Well, that's different. That's not, you're talking about an actual dagger. That's, you know, to a hobbit, that's a short sword. Right. Is what you're talking about, right? It may be small to you, but it still has weight. It still has Of heft. course, of course. It's still a forged weapon. Yeah, now you're being silly, so it's heavy as uh, shit. And he was, and, and he fell overboard at one point. We were playing a pirate game, and it was like, no, you're carrying 100 pounds on you. You can't swim good. You're 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 you, you like literally ditch some of those. Yeah, you literally it starts. I mean, you're, the weight of you just starts pulling you under the water. What are you Incredible. doing? Like incredible. You, you're carrying around a hundred pounds of daggers. You goofy bitch. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Uh, I love it. And I believe that question came up when he was talking about his character. Like, what if you fell overboard, bro? You would sink to the bottom so fast. So like, of course, he had to go overboard. It only makes uh, sense. Oh uh, yeah. Well, that was the thing that happened during one of the battles, right? When they're out at sea, they got a one of the one of the encounters. One of the random encounters was sea trolls who just like jump up on the ship, and their goal is to throw you in the water because that's how they eat you. Oh, look! There's our producer. What's up, producer? Hey, you. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, I I just think like there's certain like again other than that extreme ridiculous scenario, most of the time that stuff on a tabletop game is just not necessary to pay attention to. Sure, sure. I want to though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, in a, a video bit. game, it makes sense. But... I want to a little bit at least. I want to. <laughs> so we 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 ran into something recently and my players don't even know about this so hopefully they don't listen to this <laughs> well. but i got i got a text message from one of the guys and he's like hey we've been doing this wrong he's like and i know you've had trouble scaling he's like and it's because we've been doing this wrong what is this i don't even want to admit it <laughs> um okay so here's what we were doing when everybody initially went through uh the player's handbook built their characters and stuff like that sure they said, okay, I'm a fighter. My hit dice is a D10. Right. I'm doing two-handed fighting. Swing two D10s. That's not right. No, it's not. Time's yeah. level. Yeah. Okay, time's level. So I have characters that at level nine are doing nine D10 damage. Way wrong. Way, way, way wrong. Way wrong. Now, there may be an edition of D&D where that was correct. I don't know. I don't remember a lot of the old editions. Right. But fifth edition, definitely not. No, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because it simplified everything. It, right? did. it tried to make everything a little more simple. It did, but so it's your it's still your damage dice plus your level. Yes, and your uh, re- relevant your whatever bonuses. modifiers, yeah, 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 modifiers and things. Yeah, yeah. No, my stupid ass <laughs> rolled with it. I'm like, yeah. The only people that can roll a whole bunch of dice are rogues. <laughs> When I, I, Cause, I just went with it. Because sneak attack damage does stack. Yes. Right? To yes. where you'll end up, by higher level, rolling like 10d6 for your sneak attack damage. Right. <laughs> but 9d10? Yes. How it, do you even have an encounter when someone can deal that much damage? That's, that's what we keep running into, Jason. <laughs> okay? So I'm making things with armor classes of like 30 and shit. Oh, so, man. So that they only hit it. Every so often. You're throwing this game that it was supposed to be much more balanced way out of balance. I threw it so far out of balance. <laughs> and I never checked it or thought about it. I was like, yeah, we're good. Whatever. I don't care. Here's here's the oh, best part. Oh, man. So next session, because one of the players actually messaged me. And he's like, hey, I went and did a D&D league at the store. And I was like, that's awesome, man. Good for you. Yeah. And he's like, hey, um. We fucked this way up. Yeah, they pointed out that we were doing <laughs> things way wrong because I told them this is how it's done, and they were like, that is not how it's done. That's exactly what happened. Well, I, my introduction uh, to D&D, I played like a caster. I was playing, what was it? Uh, God, a druid. I played a druid. So I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. I don't pay attention to martial damage like at all. <laughs> 
and I never really played oh, as somebody that did martial damage. Jeez. <laughs> so I never thought of it. Never thought of it. And then, yeah, I run into this thing here, and I don't, I didn't double check it. Didn't really think about it at all. I was like, wow, that's freaking nutty. Yeah. Maybe you should read that rule book. I should have. <laughs> I didn't. And <coughs> here's the dumb part. I'll always be like, they'll be like, they'll ask me a question. I'll be like, just go, you know, flip through the player's handbook. They do. They do. You're the game master. You're supposed to be the one flipping through the player's handbook. Should be. <laughs> no. I'm the, I'm the storyteller. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> You have to be everything. You have to be the storyteller. You have to be the rules lawyer. You have to you have to know everything. Right. And I didn't You're gonna accurately run the game. And it was funny as hell. So now <laughs> now these guys that are used to rolling because they just hit level ten, they're used to rolling, you know, ten D Yeah, they're gonna be pissed. It, it's like, dude, I do fucking twelve damage a turn now. Yep. Oh, I'm so excited for it. <laughs> I'm like, this makes so much more sense. Oh, well, we were talking a little bit before the show, and I think we should probably at least mention this, but you haven't watched X-Men 97. I haven't. I haven't. So, I got some opinions, and they're kind of strong. And they're going to be unpopular. <laughs> and they're going to be unpopular, right? Because, look, by all means, or by all accounts, it is a very popular show. People are digging it. People are, I, everybody's talking about it. It's very popular. What's what's happening over here? <laughs> She's a crazy person. <laughs> what are you doing, monkey? Stop. <laughs> Uh, so I don't like it. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I don't like it. I think, look, it's, if you're, if what you're looking at is, this is just an extension of what that show was. Yeah, I guess it's fine. Right. It works. But X-Men is not that anymore. So a lot of these ideas are just, they feel so dated and so out of touch with the 40 years of evolution we've done for these characters since then, right. per 30 years, whatever. The point is, it's not the same thing anymore. You know, when we were watching that cartoon as kids, it worked because that's what the comics were. So whether you were a cartoon watcher or a comic fan that watched cartoons, it worked because that's what the comics were then. Wolverine and Cyclops, they didn't like each other because Gene... Oh, they're both in love with Jean, and they don't like each other. Uh, Rogue is a stereotype. Oh, my God, she's a stereotype, and I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Every time she says some shit like, you look more nervous than a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. I'm just like, stop. Why are you being a stereotype? Stop being a stereotype. Uh, It's just not good, man. It's just (laughs) so dated. Look, we are looking at a world in the comic world of X-Men now where, you know, yes, the Krakoan era is getting ready to end and there's going to be another relaunch. But the point is, all the time we took to get to where we are now has changed who these characters are. And we take them more seriously than we ever have before. Wolverine and Cyclops are not at each other's throats. They may actually be in a relationship with Gene together. I mean, Hickman's not allowed to actually say that, but he heavily implied it. I think we've talked about this on the show before. When we saw the Summers home that they built away from Krakoa, they built a house on the moon to live there. And Nathan lived there, and and Gene lived there, and Cyclops lived there, and uh, Vulcan lived there. All the Summers lived there. Well, Wolverine has a room there in between, or on, on the side of Gene and Cyclops' room, right? So... Look, post-humanity, we don't even call them mutants anymore. That's not, the, I mean, other than the, like, weirdo, you know, humans who are trying to shame them, they're not mutants anymore. They're post-humans. And that carries with it a lot of weight. It's not about just being all politically correct and stuff. It carries with it this idea that in a post-human society, notions that we clung to, that humanity clings to, we throw away. Notions of sexuality and modesty and, and, and politics and, and law and order, all of these things have been changed when you, when you look at a post-human society, mm. right? Because the, 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 
the evolution of these characters is what has kept them vibrant and 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 vital to this, this comic universe for so long. So it just doesn't work anymore. And there are certain things that are just just don't make sense to me about how we're looking at these characters. Well, and it's funny because you love the comics. X Men has been my favorite, one of my favorite comics since I was a little child. I have read, and again in the nineties. This is what the comic was like. And even going into like the early 2000s, this is what the comic was like. But that has changed. And it has come so far from this ridiculous stereotype that it was. And I just need it to, I, I don't know, man. I, and, and look, if you're out there and you're enjoying the cartoon, great. I'm happy for you. I just think that if you read an X-Men comic today, the cartoon would hit differently. Because it just feels stupid. It feels dated. It feels stereotypical. When when Wolverine gets in Cyclops' face, I'm just like, what, what do you think? This is not who you guys are anymore. When Rogue turns into a stereotype, it's like, this is not who you are anymore. Rogue is one of the best characters in the post-human X-Men society. She's great. And you're taking her, we've, we've taken great strides to make her that way, and you just took a huge, giant step backwards. Right, but that rogue still exists, and I think that's why people enjoy the series. That rogue does not still exist. That rogue only exists in this cartoon. No, no, no. So what I'm saying is your more evolved rogue, the one that, you, that you're enjoying now, okay? Yeah. She still exists. She's in the comics, right? Look, I get it. The cartoon doesn't take anything away from that. I just can't, like... I, I don't know. We got, we, like I said, we got done with the first episode and my wife said, what'd you think? Did you like it? And I said, no. And then she said, why? And I articulated all of what I am articulating to you right now. That is why I can't get on board with it. And I think anybody who's been reading X-Men consistently since that time would also have the same problem mm. where it just doesn't feel good anymore to see the characters in that light. Sure. Now, truth be told, there are great moments in the show. Magneto at the end of the second episode has a nice big speech about mutants and humans. And it's great. It's like one of those things that you still hear Magneto do right. Pontificate and give big speeches. That's his thing. So there are moments that are fine, right? That moment made me smile. That moment made me go, yeah, see Magneto just really hasn't changed. He's just always been the same guy. He's a good guy more than a bad guy now, but he's still that guy, but he's still the guy who like every now and again, humanity makes him go, all right, I guess I'm going to give a speech because <laughs> they speech, don't understand. I might have to wipe you out. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so, yeah, I think there are moments that are fine, right? I mean, I, we watch the, the third episode, and the third episode goes into the whole Gene clone, Madeline Pryor, Goblin Queen thing. I think that was fine, right? I, I like Madeline. I think it's, it, it, it hits a darker tone in that regard. But... And, and maybe by the end of the season, look, we'll come back. We'll talk about this when it's over, when this season is done. Because maybe by the end of the season, it won't be that same thing. Maybe that, that, that hook, that initial hook with the weird stereotype stuff was just to go make people go, oh, this is the same thing, right? This is, this is what I remember. This is what I loved. And, and maybe now we're going to evolve it beyond that, but I don't know. Sure. And they have a lot of work to do in – the next five, six episodes, however long this season is, uh, to get me to change my mind. So it's just not for you. It's not for me. And I don't think it's for a lot of people who would be, again, who, who have read X-Men comics and have continuously watched the evolution of these characters. Have you talked to anybody else who felt the same way? I've talked to a couple of people at the store that ha have just said, yeah, it just feels a little dated and stereotypical. And I'm just like, see, that's what I said. But these are also people that have been consistently reading X Men comics for the yeah. last twenty years. You know, that makes sense. I feel like if you've if you've watched them become more, seeing them less is upsetting, right? If you've watched it become something more than it was ever intended to be, seeing them take those big steps backwards, it just feels wrong. Yeah, it's like watching an addict friend go through rehab, get themselves better, and, and then, then they immediately fall off the wagon. Relapse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yep. That's fair. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So, well, so I had a, a mutual friend of ours. He came into my store one day and yeah. he's like, he's like, dude, I think you could say lemur. I don't think he, cares. I, I wasn't going to throw him out there. Like <laughs> no, I think that. you'd say lemur. Okay. He don't care. I mean, I guess that's not his legal name. 
Right, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, our buddy Lemur shows up and he's like, dude, did you watch it yet? And I was like, no. He's like, man, you need to sit down and watch it. I felt like I was 10 years old again. Yeah, Colonius was, was telling me he's really enjoying it. Good. Lemur. Yeah, like, yeah. Lemur is, is gung-ho he's telling everybody, it. you need to watch it. And he, he did exactly that. Yeah, he, like, you need to watch here, it. I see Lemur once every couple of months typically i and i don't get to hang out with lemur much okay lemur and i have never really been super close i know um plays in my D &D game (laughs) and we've never been super close though and that's okay he's a sweet guy anytime i get to see him i'm excited and yeah he was just like dude do this do this (laughs) i don't usually hear him very adamantly passionate about things he's 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 usually pretty like he's "Eh, very whatever he's so level all the time (laughs) and to get to see that kid come out of him was so exciting dude and like apparently he's he's really enjoying and i'm not saying you can't enjoy it that's not what i'm saying and i don't want you to feel like my opinion of it should color your perspective right If, if you have a desire to watch it if you like that original cartoon Please, by all means, go and watch it. You, there might be something there that you'll love. It just it doesn't hit right for me. But again, again, that's just my opinion. I'm not trying to tell anybody not to enjoy the show. Enjoy but if you show. enjoy it, he is going to find you. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I just don't care. Stop. Stop. You're going <laughs> to knock the table over, kiddo. But yeah, I mean, again, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Uh, Corey really loves it. But Corey really loved the original cartoon, and she's not read many X-Men comics over the past 20 years. So she's still in that mindset of this is what X-Men is. And that's like, no, she's like, this makes perfect sense. And you're like, no, and it doesn't. Well, and that's not to say that she doesn't know what's going on, right? Because there are moments where I'm a weird nerd, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know if she really enjoys this, but she always says she does. But I will keep her appraised of what's happening in the comic world, right? I'll sit. I even read... Uh, passages from House of X to her one night because I was just like, this is amazing. Like, you need to experience this. It's like it's like a father is sitting in front of his family reading the Bible to them. You're like, honey, sit down. It's time to read passages from X-Men. <laughs> I, it was, House of X was brilliant. Hickman, there's a reason Hickman is one of the preeminent writers of our day. And Magneto said to them, unto them, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's incredible. I was so one of the things, one of the big things that I was uh, really wanted to share, and I've shared it with everybody. I mean, I'll share it with anybody who will listen, right? I will open up that book in my store and read these passages aloud to anyone who will listen because it's an amazing <laughs> moment. Okay, who's speaking at that point in time? Xavier. Okay, Charles Xavier uh, sends a message out to the whole world when Krakoa is finally ready to go and they're gonna this is gonna be where they're gonna live charles xavier sends a telepathic message out to the whole world that basically says hey my name is charles xavier and i've been a mutant and i've had mutant abilities since i was blah 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 years old and i had a dream of peaceful coexistence between my kind and humanity but time and time again humanity has shown me that dream is a lie So this, first of all, right away, this is not something you would ever expect Xavier to say, right? He's always been the guy who who holds out hope. Definitely an optimist, yeah. Yeah, that that there will be peaceful coexistence between our species. So right away, that is something that is bonkers to hear him say. But then when he goes on to say, look, we have created a, a nation, a nation for ourselves, and we expect a period of amnesty so that mutants who have been wrongfully imprisoned by humanity, can be, can come home to Krakoa, right? Mutants will now be governed by mutant laws, not man's laws. Uh, and I, uh, he starts talking about the plants, right? We have plants that we have grown that will cure most human diseases. Flus, cancers, gone, right? Brain diseases, gone. Overnight, these these drugs will extend your life. They will let you live longer. They will let you live healthier lives. Normally, this would be a gift I would give freely from me to you. But now, you must pay for it. And you pay for it by just letting us be, right? And just letting us live. And it's just a, it's just a moment that is so different from what we had seen Xavier, who we had seen Xavier be in the past, 
it's impactful. It's one of the most, I think it's one of the most impactful moments in that story because it's so out of character for who this person is. But he's, he's finally understood it's not going to work the way he wants it to. And if he's going to have a species, if his species is going to thrive, he needs to abandon his old notions. That's the X-Men I'm talking about. That's where we've come. That's how far we've come from these old 90s stereotypes. So yeah, I, I started that by, by, by saying, essentially, right, I will keep my wife appraised of what is happening in the comic world, whether that be with X-Men or Batman or all the other things that she likes. And there are certain books that I buy just for her. I don't, like, I like Alien, but she likes Alien, right? Like, right. I buy that book for her. I don't buy that book for me. Because if it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't buy that book. Sure. Uh, she's a big fan of Rogue and Gambit. She likes them. She likes their relationship, right? So Mr. and Mrs. X, where they got married and they're going to be, a, they're going to have a relationship. I bought that book for her. I don't buy that book for me. I, I mean, maybe I would have bought that book just as a completionist. Sure. But I don't know that I would have read it. You know right. what I mean? Right. If not for her. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I, I just, I think there's a disconnect between what this cartoon is trying to be and what the comics have been for so long. And I hope maybe the cartoon can move beyond the stereotype and tell me a story that really resonates as an X-Men fan. Mm. But I just don't see it yet. Four episodes in, I just don't see it yet. And maybe it's just not the thing the show's going to do at and all. And maybe it's not. Yeah, I don't know. Again, the little the, there's a little moment with Magneto. There's even a little moment in the fourth episode with the or the third episode with the Goblin Queen that made me go, huh. That's that's good. That's a really good moment for the characters, but they're 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 few and far between, you know. Sure. And I don't know if they'll have a legitimate impact on what the show's narrative will do. We'll see. I'm gonna watch it. Look, my wife's a huge fan, and I work in a comic store. I manage a comic store, so I'm gonna watch it. Right? I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna be able to talk about it. I want to be able to talk about it. I want to be able to 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 have conversations about it. So, we'll see. We'll stick with it. We'll see. Maybe we'll talk about it again at the end, and we'll see if that's my opinion has changed. We shall revisit this, and we will read passages <laughs> from Professor X. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Fantastic. Okay. You guys need to go to entertainthegeeky.com. You can follow us on all of our social media there. Yes, we have not been hanging out on the social medias a whole lot. Sorry. Uh, I don't like social medias, but... I understand it's important, right. but I don't like it. Right. Love you guys. <laughs> but I don't always love playing on the on the Google machine. Um, so apologies there. We will try to keep it more updated uh moving forward. And yeah, pick up a free copy of Merle's Truck Stop Main by going to entertainthegeeky.com, click that gear tab, and you can get it for free. The world famous one page role playing game. <laughs> Every time, every I time. I didn't feel like I had said enough until uh -huh. it's there. Uh huh. What are you doing? Come over here. Everyone's just gonna see your little bobbly head in in the shot the whole time. Well, she can close this out. Hey, say, stay geeky. Stay geeky. <laughs> ship. What? Yeah. It's a ship. <laughs> <laughs> she said shit. It totally like, sounded like that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. You're doing would, some good Zelda battles today? Yeah, I would nice. stay and do bonus content, but I gotta I still gotta go to the grocery store and grab some snacks and oh, shit for the uh for the game. Oh shit. Pick you pick you a birthday party so that works out perfect. Birthday party? Yeah, I'm going to my birthday party. Not yours. Friend's Who's, birthday party. Whose birthday is it? Oh, okay. Who's Gabriel? Uh, my buddy 